Welcome to Pile Buck's Pile Driving video series. In this series, we'll be covering everything you need to know pertaining to pile driving, including the various equipment, methods, bearing piles, sheet piles, accessories, the different types of hammers, and much more. In this first video, we're going to do an overview of pile foundation design. Before we begin, we want to thank our sponsor who helped make this video possible, ECA, Equipment Corporation of America. Since 1918, ECA is the go-to provider for heavy construction equipment, furnishing contractors with the most advanced and reliable foundation equipment in the world. Now back to the video. As in the case with most geotechnical design, the design of pile foundations lacks the neat precision of structural design. The interactions between piles and the surrounding soil can be challenging. Insertion of piles generally alters the character of the soil, and intense strains can occur locally near the piles. The non-homogeneity or combination of different types of soils along with the effects of the pile group and pile shape add further difficulties to the understanding of soil pile interaction. Broad generalizations about pile behavior are unrealistic. Be careful not to make assumptions. When it comes to pile driving, a thorough understanding of all the factors involved are crucial in order to be successful in the design of pile foundations. That being said, let's take a look at the driven pile design process. The driven pile design and construction process shares common aspects with most typical structural design. However, unlike some common structural designs, there can be costly consequences if pile drivability is not executed in a flawless manner. Pile drivability, or the ability of the pile to be driven to a designated depth without suffering or sustaining damages, must be carefully planned during the design phase. Consider, if the design were to be completed and a contractor selected, and then the piles could not be driven, large cost would quickly pile up. No pun intended. For that reason, it's imperative that the design and construction phases be linked in a way that doesn't exist in most other construction industries. When it comes to pile driving, you're playing in a different arena. There's generally 10 steps in the driven pile design process. Step one, establish requirements for structural conditions. You must first determine the general structure requirements, including site characterization. For those unfamiliar with site characterization, site characterization is the process of developing an understanding of the geologic, the hydrologic and engineering properties that would impact site conditions. This might include the soil, rock, along with groundwater, and in many cases, man-modified conditions in the subsurface, like utilities and tunnels. You might want to consider questions like, will the project be constructed in phases or all at one time? What are the general structure layouts and approach grades? What are site characteristics at the soil surface? Is the structure subjected to any special design events like seismic, scour, debris, vessel, impact, etc.? If there are special design events, the design requirements for the event should be reviewed at this stage so that these considerations can be factored into the site investigation. Are there possible modifications in the structure that may be desirable for the site under consideration? What are the approximate foundation loads? Are there deformation or deflection limitations beyond the usual requirements? Step two, obtain general site geology. A great deal can be learned about the foundation requirements, even with a basic understanding of the site geology. For small structures, this may involve only a very superficial investigation, such as a visit to the site. The foundation design for a very large structure 
may require extensive geologic studies. Step three, collect foundation experience from the area. Typically, there's information available pertaining to foundations that have previously been constructed in the area prior to your project. Needless to say, this information can be utilized to avoid as many problems as possible during the job. Prior to selecting the foundation type, both subsurface exploration information and foundation construction experience should be obtained. Step four, develop and execute subsurface exploration program. Here you develop a subsurface exploration program in order to uncover any challenges that may need to be dealt with within the design. A structural engineer must know what needs to be addressed to ensure that a solid foundation is built. The results of the subsurface exploration program and laboratory testing are used to prepare a subsurface profile. Step five, select foundation system. Now that you've evaluated the information in steps one through four, a foundation system may be selected. The first question to be considered is whether a shallow or deep foundation is required. To answer this question, consider the strength and compressibility of the site soils, the proposed loading conditions, and the project performance criteria. If a deep foundation is required, you must consider should driven piles be used or another type of deep foundation system. In this video, we'll focus primarily on driven piles. However, pilebuck.com features dozens of guides that elaborate more on the different types of foundation equipment and methods. Step six, loading and performance criteria. The geotechnical engineer needs a clear set of foundation loads and performance requirements. In other words, how much weight does the foundation need to handle? And how is the foundation expected to perform under certain conditions, like during an earthquake or a flood? Step seven, driven pile foundation design. Pile type. While selecting the pile type, it's imperative that the applied load per pile is consistent with the pile type selected. While making this decision, consider the following. Both the structural capacity of the pile, as well as the realistic geotechnical capacities of the pile type for the soil conditions at the site. Be sure to also consider the cost of the available alternative piles and the capability of available construction contractors to drive the selected pile. Loads. One of the most common and unfortunate problems faced on a pile driving job is when the loads the foundation needs to support were not accurately defined in the design. If there are special design events to be considered, again, like an earthquake or flood, they must be included in the determination of the loads. The design of the foundation should always factor in worst case scenarios. Step eight, calculate pile length, capacity, and performance. Considering the selected pile type, now is the time to perform static analysis. Static analysis is the process of determining ultimate pile capacity and the pile group response to applied loads. The ultimate capacity of a pile and pile group is the smaller of the soil rock medium to support the loads or the structural capacity of the piles. Static analysis is crucial at this stage in the process, as it may be necessary to change pile type or number of piles. Step nine, calculate drivability. Now's the time to ensure that the chosen pile can be driven to the required capacity and penetration depth at a reasonable driving resistance without excessive driving stresses. Because hammer selection is typically determined after the contractor is selected, possible hammers should be considered and even tested to ensure that the pile is drivable to the capacity and depth required. Step 10, design review. At this point in the process, all aspects of the design should be reviewed. If significant changes are indicated, it may be necessary to develop a new design. Like what you see? Be sure and crush that like button, subscribe, and hit the notification icon so you're notified whenever we release a new pile driving video. 
We appreciate your support. Construction of pile foundations. There's generally eight steps involved in the construction of pile foundations. Step one, prepare plans and specifications. When the design has been finalized, plans and specifications can now be prepared and the procedures that will be used to verify pile capacity can be defined. To avoid claims after construction is underway, all of the quality control procedures must be clearly defined for the bidders. Step two, set field capacity determination procedure. While installing a pile foundation, it's imperative to meet the design requirements for compressive, lateral, and uplift capacity. These factors may determine the driving of piles for a required ultimate capacity or to a predetermined length established by the designer. Step three, contractor selection. After the bidding process is complete, a contractor is then selected. Step four, perform wave equation analysis of contractor's equipment submission. At this point, the engineering effort shifts to the field. The contractor will submit a description of the pile driving equipment they intend to use on the job for the engineer's evaluation. Wave equation analysis is performed to determine the driving resistances that must be achieved in the field to meet the required capacity and pile penetration depth. Driving stresses are determined and evaluated. If all conditions are satisfactory, the equipment is approved for driving. Step five, set preliminary driving criteria. Based on the results of the wave equation analysis in step four, and any other requirements in the design, the preliminary driving criteria can be set. Step six, drive test pile and evaluate capacity. The test pile or piles are driven to meet the preliminary criteria developed in step five. Driving requirements may be defined by penetration, driving resistance, dynamic monitoring results, or a combination of these conditions. The capacity can be evaluated by driving resistance from wave equation analysis, the results of dynamic monitoring, static load test, or a combination of these. Step seven, adjust driving criteria or design. In some cases, it is ideal to perform preliminary field testing before the final design. When the job is considered large and soil conditions are difficult, you may be able to cut back on costs by acquiring results from a design stage test pile program, including actual driving records at the site. Step eight, construction control. After the driving criteria are set, the production pile driving begins. At this point, quality control and assurance procedures should now be established. Good communication between all parties involved in the design and construction of a pile foundation is essential to reach a successful completion of the project. Well, that's all we've got for now. And if you wanna be notified when we publish more of these pile driving related videos, be sure and subscribe and hit that notification bell. And again, we'd like to thank our sponsor, ECA. Visit ecanet.com or call 800-PILE-USA to view their impressive lineup of drilling and pile driving rigs and other deep foundations equipment.